Okay, I think we're done with these integral types, and by integral I mean numbers like negative one, negative two, negative three, not negative two point eight nine, whatever. It's they're literal, they're counting numbers in negative and positive ranges, and the only difference between bytes versus shorts versus ints versus longs is the number of bits you wish to have, which means the more bits you have or bytes you have, uh, the wider the range of values you can store. So I hope we've kind of covered all that. Let me get this off the screen. Let's move to the next primitive type I wish to talk to, and that is about the floating point types. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details of how these are stored in bits. If you're really curious, in my C++ playlist, I do go into how floats are stored in a computer. No, you do not need to know C++ to watch those videos. They're very centered around the floating point types. But let, well, let me tell you a few, few things. One, the reason why we call them floating point types is they're stored with this point in mind, right? This this decimal point. And this decimal point can float around the number, if you would, just like so. Uh, depend I'm hitting Control-T, by the way, to do that magic trick. But the, the decimal point can float around, and so we call them floating point types. And that all depends on the mantissa and the exponent and blah, 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 blah. Go watch those floating point value playlist if you really want to know what's going on. But one thing I will say in this video playlist is a computer is a discrete machine, which is a fancy way of saying it can count uh, numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but it actually doesn't binary, so a computer being discrete is even more hardcore because discrete means 0 or 1. So how do you store a floating point type using zeros and ones. It's very tricky. It's extremely error prone. If you do any long-term running of, a, of additions of floats, you'll get error very quickly because computers cannot store these floating point values exactly. The number line is still quantized. Now, what do I mean by quantized? Well, again, I show that in those floating point video playlists, but let me see if I can come up with an example here. I kind of worked one off screen, but let me do float me float, and I'll show you what I came up with, Point seven f and I have to suffix it with f, because otherwise without the f it'll interpret the literal as a double, which is just 32 more bits than a float, okay, float is 32, double is 64, so I have to suffix that with an f to make the compiler happy, and then down here I'm going to say me float plus equals point, so how many zeros do I have here, I got, let me just copy the value off the screen here, bring it on in here, me float plus that, and then I'm going to console write line, me float equals 7, or 0.7, sorry, 0.7f. Right, what I'm asking the runtime to show me is, are the bits that are stored in me float, do they perfectly represent a 0.7f? Right, now it's dangerous to compare floats with equality. Right, but but in this case, it's it's a contrived example. I'm doing something straightforward. That's okay. I, generally, you want to subtract two values that you're comparing. Take the absolute value. Make sure it's less than some threshold. But for now, I'm just saying, hey, are the bits the same? All right, control of five, and the answer is false. All right, I added this little itty bitty number here, this point zero 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 one, and sure enough, seven point zero 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 one is not equal to 0.7. We can even use the debugger to our advantage. F10, 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 F10. Me float is 0 0.7. Right? Now let me just add one more zero in here. And control F5. Remember, this comparison here said, no, they're not equal. 7 plus a little really small value is not equal to 0.7. And now we're saying, hey, yeah, it is true. Okay, what happened here? Let me... Employ the debugger again. F10, F10, F10. Me float is 0.7. Now here's the headache with floats: is the the you get error. All right, they can't store large values and small values at the same time. They can be either be really precise, or they can be really large. They can't be either or. And, and 0.7 in comparison to this, 0.7 is pretty large. So we lost that information. So even though it looks like a nice continuous line from float min value to float max value. In your head, you may be thinking, oh, if I use a float, I get everything in between here. No, you don't. Okay, You still get discrete steps. For example, here's 0, and here is, uh, we'll, we'll say this is 1. Okay, and This is 0.7, what we're using in our 
example right here, and then point uh, point seven zzz one. This value uh, is not on the number line. Okay, if I take away a zero, like I did previously, yeah, that's on the number line. All right, so whatever that is, I'll represent it right here, nice and tight. Point seven followed by one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six zeros and a one. That's on the number line. But and and there's possibly some other values in there. But I'll tell you what. Uh, oh, sorry. That number, adding that zero back in, is definitely not on the number line. So that's why when we say flow, yeah, we get this range here where we can go between. 0 and 1 we don't have we're not stuck to discrete values like 0 1 2 3 4 5 I can say 0 0 0.1 0 0.001 those kind of things but it's still a discrete number line there's steps here all right it's not continuous so hopefully that example is at least enlightening if you really want to get to the nitty gritty details again go look at the floating point videos in my C++ playlist uh, not too much more to say about that, except you can implicitly convert a float to a double. All right, float me float gets 0.7 f, and then I can say double me double gets me float. I can build that. And the compiler's like, yeah, totally legit. That's fine. But then if I turn around and say uh, me float gets me double, then the compiler's going to complain, saying, hey, uh. There's a lot more range out here. This is a narrowing conversion. You're trying to take a possibly something that takes up 64 bits to represent and convert it to something where I only have 32. And so if you want to do that, that's fine. And if you're outside the valid ranges, then you might get some weird magic. But otherwise, let's do an explicit cast, and, and I'll be happy. So there you go, doubles and floats. And then again, hopefully this is old hat. If I have float, f gets... One, oh, let's do pi, 3.141592.7f, and then int me int, actually do, let's do pi here, float pi, and then me int gets pi, well, obviously an int can store a 3 or it can store a 4, but it can't store a 3.141592.7, so again the compiler is saying, hey, you might lose some information here, this is unsafe, are you sure you want to do this? If you do, please be explicit about it which we can be. And then we truncate, which basically means bye-bye everything after the decimal point. It doesn't round up or round down. It literally just chops it off, and then we get me int, console right line. It's a 3. Just to prove to you it truncates, let me take this up to a 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, control F5. It is still a 3. Okay, so there you go. Floating point values. I could go on for that for about a while, but I think that's probably enough for this video. And again, the C++ floating point videos are there for your consumption if you wish to really get into the nitty-gritty details.